It's impossible to sum up how personal Love, Violet is. Stories and histories are always personal, as is the harm of false myths used to demonize. Growing up in a family of evangelical pastors and missionaries, my only words or images for queerness were the horror stories of male pedophiles pouring from our Christian radio station. I longed to be good, loved, family. How could I be queer? I couldn't. So I tried not to be. I suppressed and repressed until it was choking me. And then, in my 30s, not even divorce or resigning a faculty position or facing my very religious family could stop me. I never felt more liberated, joyful, myself. But unlike many kids today, when I saw the disgust disfigure my grandmother's usually loving face, I was grown, physically safe, surrounded by support. So many kids are not. So I wrote Love, Violet directly to them, around the politics and terms and slurs. I wanted to break the silence with a love story. I wanted to give kids words for themselves like magnificent, dream, adventure, and the word for how we thrive together. I wrote the truest story I could about what young love feels like, that awe, being dazzled, and I wove in the gender expressions of many I love and myself. Growing up, I hadn't seen gender nonconforming gals portrayed as tender, or feminine ones as sporty or queer, or queer people of color honored ever. Yet there we were, and now here we are with Charlene's evocative, honoring images, and a story about the most human thing we do, love.